Oh, we're live. Uh, uh. Hey there, everybody. I see Tyler, Emma Memer, Arby's Gaming, Dylan, Reuniclus, Miss Cassie. Uh, if I'm if I'm missing anybody, there's Golden Pen. And Dylan, I told you he was here. There's Masungus. It's Tomar o'clock. It's eight. PM on a Thursday. You know what that means. There's Shramorpazorgplagualius. Always, always here right on time. Uh, oh, look, and that is my 8 o'clock alarm telling me that we got started perfectly on time. Ghostly Ghoul GX is here. Hope everyone's doing well. Gosh, I'm a little hot tonight. I'm going to turn the air down a bit. Let's see here. Just going to use my cellular telephone. You know, they make smart apps to control your thermostat now, believe it or not. I know that may surprise some of you. The technology has advanced that far. Man. Whew. It's been it's been a it's been a bit of a heat wave again this week. Uh, even though it's only seventy something degrees out now, maybe I'm just having hot flashes. Just part of part of fatherhood, right? Uh, let's see, Ghostly Ghoul GX. Thank you for resubscribing for seven months now. Seven months, Ghostly Ghoul GX has spent in the subscriber verse. Uh. I don't want to air this publicly, but Tomar, could you stop coming to my place of work, threatening to beat me up if I don't resub? It's getting out of hand. Well, why would I when you're clearly meeting my demands every on a week on a monthly basis? I mean, if you really wanted me to stop, prove to me that it doesn't work. No, please, please keep resubbing, please. I'm sorry, I'll never do it again. Oh <laughs> uh, no, okay. Is it just me or is Tomar looking? You know. Really damn fine this evening. Snot. Snot with the flattery over there. Three-time tiger. Did you know that Thursday is actually ancient Greek for Tomar's day? <laughs> yeah, yeah. The day of Thor, a.k.a. the day of Tomar. Uh, Scamaloo. Thank you for resubscribing for two months now. Scamaloo simply says, Love you, sweetie. Thank you so much, Scam. Uh, and then we got Diz Dazter in there. We got Troy, your boy. Snot, of course. Powers. F. Kim's here. Sticky Fings. Big Bouncing Bongus joined in. Uh, Hello, Tomar, says jo Joey Kuloper. What's your favorite color? Mine's purple. I... I I think green. Green's probably my favorite color, but I can't wear anything green because then it'll be invisible on, on my on my chroma keying. Windex and whiskey! 15 months as a subscriber. Thank you so much for joining us yet again. And Windex and Whiskey says, hey there, Puddin. We got Boehner Tracks, who's resubscribed for five months now. Thank you so much, Boehner Tracks. Uh, and he says, uh Finally, Tomar Thursday, when you're going to play StarCraft Brood War. Oh, when you're going to play StarCraft Brood War, Tomar. We've all been waiting for months. This is, this is literally the first time StarCraft Brood War has ever been brought up in this room, as far as I've noticed. But, uh, I, I, I suck at, I suck at RTSs. I mean, like, I enjoy playing them by myself with nobody watching, but, like... I just I would just be embarrassed if you guys were watching me play. I mean, I guess I played technically what's it called was an RTS, the 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 Walking Village, but we all saw how how horribly that went. I misunderstood one game mechanic and murdered my entire village in like 5 minutes cuz they, they they were planting a million crops and not harvesting them and and no one was eating. Uh, Big bouncing bongus, thank you for the 100 bits by the way. And that and that that RTS wasn't even uh, that wasn't even like a competitive one. It's just like you versus the environment. I still managed to lose. Uh, Josh, it's Joshua the Tomar. Tomar, that's me, Captain Squiggles. 
Oh, Baffy Lamb, thank you for resubscribing for 16 whole months. All right. <laughs> I do appreciate it. Yeah, we're going to have a bit of a ghost trick situation, but, but, raise his finger, actually, I need to get my iPad because it's, I left it in my bedroom. I use it every night to play soothing ASMR into my, into my little Bluetooth pillow speakers. Uh, oh, and Invader Zach, thank you for resubscribing for six months. You've just earned your third Tomar Emerald. Thank you so much for subbing. I, of course, I also use it to read One Piece, but it's not as if a new One Piece came out last night, now is it? Yeah, it's a pillow speaker. It's not anything fancy. Uh, I don't even think it had the greatest reviews on Amazon, but uh, it it does exactly what I want it to. It's a it's a speaker I get to stick under my pillow, and I can hear it, and my wife can't. And it's not it's not very loud, uh, but that it's I think it's perfect for mo. There's some videos that are just too too low for me to hear, but most stuff on YouTube I can hear just fine. Here, I can I can I can shill some more affiliate links here. I swear I'm not being paid to endorse this stuff, but I'm happy to take money for for making a recommendation. That's the entire point of affiliates links, right? Here, let's see. Pillow speaker. It's this thing. It's it's made by pile. As in P-Y-L-E, pile. Oh, currently unavailable. Do they have a new one? Oh gosh, they stopped making these? I, I, I'm, I'm, I hope there's something else like this out there, because if I ever need to replace mine, I'm going to be fall into a deep depression. Pile Bluetooth pillow speaker. Oh my god. Well, they don't sell it on Amazon anymore. That's that's upsetting. Well, I've got one and Jaxie's got one, and when those are gone, hopefully they still sell them somewhere else. I love I love I want I wonder if it got like recalled because it electrocuted somebody's brain while they were asleep or something. That would stink. And uh oh yeah, Invader Zack. Oh yeah, I I got Invader Zax resub. Thank you so much. And, and Invader Zax says, Tomar, what's up? Not too much. Just trying to shill products that are no longer in in production. Blue pile. Pillow speaker. Oh, looks like you can still buy it directly from Pile USA, but they're sold out. They're sold out. Oh my gosh. Anyway, this is what it looks like. Even if I'm shilling a product that you can't even buy. Their Amazon link doesn't work either. But yeah, it's got Bluetooth capabilities. And it sits nice and flat under your pillow. Alright, I'll stop talking about the pillow speaker. Uh, Golden Pen, thank you for the 100 bits. Tomar, have you... Ever thought of playing Splatoon 3 or Ark Survival Evolved? Because Ark can support multiple people if you have a server. I mean, I could absolutely repurpose one of my servers into an Ark server. I've done it before. Jaxie and I used to play on one. It would be kind of fun. Like, Splatoon 3... I've never been a very much of a competitive Splatoon player. I'd feel very self-conscious playing that in front of the stream. Uh, but, like, Ark... Arc was fun. It would be something to get a bunch of people from the stream into an Arc server, wouldn't it? You're asking what map? I, d I didn't know there was more than one map. I have not played Arc in a very long time. Let's see. Arc Survival Evolved. Maximum players. Join Force. Okay, so it looks like no, no, on a dedicated server. Oh, wow. 
Due to the fact that you'll be able to host a server and play at the same time, there's a limit on how far survivors can travel. They can only travel 200... No, okay. 25 players is where... If you're in the server... 50 players of people join via friends list, then it's 32. No idea why. Regardless of your connection, your server will be at full 255 ping with 50 players on. 25 is where it starts to get laggy. If we, I wonder if we could do like a 15 person art game or something. I don't know. Wait, is the, is what are you what are we what are you talking about there, Tyler? Are we just still are you still talking about Ark? The devs just asset flip abandoned projects and leave their stuff in horrible, unoptimized messes. That's the Ark devs. Yeah, I believe that. I remember that game was was very taxing on my server. Uh, RMX.exe. Thank you for resubscribing for eight months. Uh, I Chomar. I Chom Chom Chomar. <laughs> okay. Glad to know it. Uh, I I did like I liked Ark on like as a concept, and I thought it was fun to play. But yeah. I mean, any of those games will get maybe... It's like we might as well just, like, start a Rust server. Oh, gosh. Don't put ideas in my head. I... Whenever I start playing Rust, I get horribly addicted for at least, like, a week or two. Uh, it's, it's really bad. But it would be fun, wouldn't it? Let's see. Do Seven Days to Die. I don't know much about Seven Days to Die. I should check it out. We could always do more Minecraft. We were able to get it. Didn't we get like, we had like almost 80 players on that, the high capacity mines, Minecraft server I had spun up and it was running pretty well, all things considered. Cause we did not, we, I think we spun up a, a, an, an AWS instance that had like hundred something gigs of Ram on it. Uh, Tomar is like, Satan and hit hit TV animated show smiling friends playing rust. Okay, golden pen. Uh was pretty high cap first off. I'll still I still got a backup of it somewhere. I think I still have it too. I in fact I think I still have that server running on like a on like a T3 uh small or something. Just so we could mess around with it potentially. But yeah, I'm just kind of wasting money keeping that Minecraft server running and closed off to the public. Should probably do something with it or shut it down. Uh, I kind of forgot about it, so thanks for reminding me. We got we got to bust into Tomar's AWS account sometime and see what other stupid things I've left running that are draining my bank account. No, fortunately, that whatever instance type I put it on will only is only costing me like thirty bucks a month. But still, that's thirty bucks a month I'm spending on something I'm not using at all. That's not a good thing. Uh, I don't love burning money. I'm, probably the first thing I'm gonna do when we get off is just create an AMI of the server and then shut it down. So then I just have to pay like a few cents a month. For, for storing the AMI, which is an image, by the way. It's, it's just a it's just an image of the server that I can then spin up using whatever instance we want. Uh, Tomar, I just remembered my cousin had a cat named Tomo, short for to Toma Tomato growing up. What did you do to the cat? Oh, yeah, I guess I'll also have to pay money if I want to hang on to my um, elastic IP. But that's not that's not that important. If I just leave the TTL at like five minutes, I can spin it up with any new IP I want as long as I update DNS. Anyway, now I'm rambling. Uh, I forget how much does an elastic IP cost to hold? Elastic IP cost. I gotta know this, you guys. This is important. Every stray ADD thought I have must be must be answered. Let's see. Elastic IP doesn't incur charges if it's associated with an EC2 instance. Okay, but what if it isn't? Uh, you're charged by the hour if it doesn't meet that. Okay, here. The pricing is... 0 .005 dollars. So, 
one fifth of a penny, sorry, one twentieth of a penny per elastic IP, not associated with a running instance per hour on a pro rata basis. Okay, so that sounds pretty affordable. One twentieth, so it's a penny for every twenty hours that I have that I'm hanging on to that IP address. Uh, is it, I mean, I'm sure that still adds up over the course of a month. I'm gonna I'm gonna still do the math. So point here. Whoop, I'm in programmer mode. Let's go to standard mode. Point zero zero five times thirty one days. Sorry, point zero zero five times 24 hours times 31 days. Okay, three dollars. It's still less than it's less than four dollars a month uh, to hang on to the IP without it being attached to anything. You know what though? We could save all that money just by, like I said, just updating DNS. It's fine. It's fine. Uh. All right, now that I know that, um, I don't want to think about AWS anymore for the rest of the night. Although, what should you guys should we do? Do one more round of uh of like stable diffusion before we jump into Ghost Trick? That that'd be a fun. That'd be fun, and I want to put my bot through its paces anyway. I won't forget to shut down the Minecraft server. Trust me. Okay. So let me first of all get it up and running. Let's see, open in terminal. WebUI.cmd. Do you want to restore changes? No. All right. Our environment file has not changed. We are relaunching. We are loading Stable Diffusion V1 model. Yeah, listen to the guy. We're not currently looking here. Okay, I'll ask. Whoops. I accidentally added an extra character there. Okay. Now we're looking for volunteers. So, un question mark vol, if you want to... If you have a, an idea for a prompt you want us to visualize. I like this tradition. It's a fun little tradition. All right. And just, just as of now, Stable Diffusion is running. It's ready for input. Or rather, the my UI for it is ready. All right, let's share it up. And all the while, feel free to keep volunteering. All right, Stable Diffusion Web UI, go. All right, and go. All right, I'm gonna pick a volunteer now. In fact, I'm gonna pick three. And when, once we finish that, I say, I go into the room, try not to wake my sleeping daughter, and go get the iPad. All right, here we go. I'm going to pick three. All right, the Emeralds have decided it's Baffy Lamb, Tyler, and Caitlin. All right. I am going to paste these guys into a little notepad file. All right, Baffy Lamb, you're up first. You can't claim it's rigged. I I can I will show my source code later. It's 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 using Python's random module. So if it's rigged, then Python's random module is inherently flawed and you can take it up with the developers of Python. Uh Did I see anything yet from Baffy Lamb? I hope I didn't miss it. I should probably update this so people have to put their um their suggestion in with the, when they vote. Does that sound like a good idea? That way stuff has to already be ready to go. It would speed things along, wouldn't it? Even though I meant this to be super generic. 
the, the idea that it would come along with like a user inputted message doesn't seem like the worst idea ever. Um, <laughs> Tyler says it was just a oh, Tyler. Who'd you say you gave yours away to? Nerf seven. Okay, let me let me update that in my notes. All right, thank you. And then, have I missed Baffy Lamb's prompt or? Again, this would be smart on my part to have something that presents this stuff to me a little better. No, I guess I didn't catch it, Baffy Lamb. I'm sorry. Oh, there it is. Uh, oh, try snail-shaped baby hands. All right, I'm gonna. Uh, baby hands shaped like snails. This is gonna be weird. Uh, hyper realistic. Uh, eight, eight K UHD. Okay, whatever. Let's do PLMS and we'll generate our 20 batches. Now to check and make sure I'm not destroy. Okay, no, it's working. I don't think my GPU is imploding today. By the way, thanks to a few people here. Thanks to Three Time Tiger, uh, who resubscribed for four months, four minutes ago. Thank you to Weenie Bum, who resubs, who, who is a new subscriber. New subscriber, Weenie Bum. Welcome to the subscriber verse. Uh, th so welcome, Weenie Bum. And then Failed Heart Andy, uh, thank you for resubscribing for nine months. You've earned your fourth Tomar Emerald. And, uh, and failed heart Andy says, hello, Tomar and chat. Hello to you, Andy. And then lick six. Thank you for, uh, resubscribing for nine months as well. Also earning your fourth Tomar Emerald lick six and failed heart Andy nine months in the subscriber verse. Okay. Uh, let's do a refresh so we don't have to wait for all these to finish. Oh my goodness. That's just like a, a weird the baby with too many limbs. That's a close up of, of a like a painting of a baby with giant eyes. That's just a snail. That's like a weird deformed snail. Uh <laughs> oh, I said baby Hans. I'm sorry. <laughs> you know what? Let's 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 see if anything cool came out of this. But I there that's kind of like a a snail baby thing. But no, let's stop all batches. Uh, so it's going to stop after this one finishes. I'm just curious to see what we got out of all this. <laughs> that's, that's something. That's something. Okay. All right. Okay. <laughs> all right. Interesting. All right. Baby of hands. Let's start this again. Uh, post this in our creepy pasta. What do you mean it took so long? It didn't take that long. Here, let's see what we've got. This is our first one. That's just a a, a horror, a body horror amalgam of baby baby appendages. I guess mostly hands. We're gonna create some of the worst mutants. This is just a bunch of like little baby hands coming out of what appears to be a piece of leather. Uh, this doesn't look like a baby's hands at all. Uh, there's like a really stubby thumb here and then some really long fingers. And then for some reason, all these fingers have painted nails. Are they painted nails or are they rotting nails? I'm not really sure. It just ain't right. It just ain't right. Uh, this baby is shoving his fingers through its own neck. Kind of morbid, but, uh, but okay. It has some extra fingers, too. At least one there, and it kind of looks like there's a thumb down there somewhere. Uh, there is a snail on some fingers. There's, 
like a T-Rex baby hand. I swear it looks like there's a little claw on the end of this one. Uh, then this one has like a belly, like a like an Audi belly button on its chest or something. This baby is. This baby's like, honey, I shrunk the kids. It's in like, it's like surrounded by blades of grass that are taller than it or something. And, and it's raising its deformed fist to the sky. I guess that's it. This is like, this is like a baby that's the size of a snail. And then more just like hands holding snails, like weird deformed hands holding snails. Let's see some more. There's a baby hand. Look at those lovely little baby fingers. Just sort of next to the snails. Also on like, again, like a piece of like suede or leather or something. That's just a, an abomination. Oh, here it's finishing up. That's creepy. That's going to give me nightmares. That's like a, a hands baby being held in someone else's hands. Uh, thank you for this Baffy lamb. Uh, here, this is like almost, this is the closest we've gotten to like matching your thing. Little baby hands shaped like snails. I think this is, this is your winner, Baffy lamb. Then more mutated baby head hands. <laughs> what the hell is that? Look, there's a little face in there. That's super creepy. And it's got like a snail hat. And then there's a another weird little snail thing in front of it. I like that guy. This is my favorite so far. Uh, more snails and fingers and snails and fingers and fingers and fingers and finger snails. Okay, that was a fun run. Let's uh let's move on to I believe based on Tyler's original order although yeah let's just go for it. It was going to be Tyler but Nerif 7. You have my full attention Nerif. What's it going to be? I hope you I hope you came up with your thing while we were doing all that. I sure hope. I sure hope Nerif. Oh god, this is bad. Sorry. Okay. George Lucas here. I'm going to copy this. All right, this is all ready to go. George Lucas in an intense debate with the insane clown posse, realistic digital art, 16K HD. Okay. You, that one I'm just going to put in verbatim, I think. The only time that I really will like fully, fully intervene is if I'm worried it's going to put out something pornographic that's going to get me in trouble with Twitch. I already love this. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> I don't really know what the actual insane cloud posse looks like. And none of these guys resemble George Lucas to me, but that's just a funny image. <laughs> All right, here we go. There it is. George Lucas is debating the, the classic multicolored insane cloud posse. You've got the purple insane clown you've got the yellow insane clown you've got the more bald yellow insane cloud you got this sort of orangey one you got the red one up here he's my favorite insane clown all the insane clowns are here <laughs> i like how george lucas has caught has caught insane clown syndrome here that's great <laughs> these are some good ones uh, there's George Lucas and his, he, with his, look at his big hand, George Lucas and his big dilated alien fingers gesturing towards his best insane clown friend. Uh, <laughs> this is a tribute to George, to George's time spent with the ICP. Oh my goodness. I like this one. You never, you really never know which prompts are going to give you the best stuff. That's, that's George Lucas observing another universe's George Lucas who's standing in front of some insane clowns. <laughs> I 
Gong T A F Pow. <laughs> uh, you, I you say Kungat. I'm seeing Ganga T, as in like the Gungas, the Gungas, the Gungans, the Gungas. <laughs> that is Ganga T A F Pow. All right, and then this is a cult. This is. Uh, okay. <laughs> look at this meeting of the minds I like George Lucas with his like plate like his hair looks like it was knitted like 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 it's George Lucas wearing or this is just a bootleg George Lucas just a guy with a big old man neck and a beard and some fake George Lucas hair that he had his grandma in it for him uh, <laughs> and then this is very much a bootleg member of the IC. This guy in just an orange t-shirt in the back. <laughs> he looks like he, he couldn't find the insane clown mask. So he just bought like a generic like skeleton mask and, and drew on it with a marker. Anyway, there's your buddy George. There's your buddy George again. This is, oh my God. <laughs> George, as he extends his long hairy hand toward this very scary member of the ICP. And then down here in the bottom left are his cohorts. That's the rest of the posse right there. These tiny little figures. Uh, classic George. This is this George. This is George after the insane clown posse drained all of his life essence out of him. He got quite skinny. You can see he's sort of started to wrinkle. Uh, this is, this is just, you know, classic George Lucas doing his thing with George Lucas. This is George teaching a, an insane clown how to fight. He's showing him a, a proper battle stance. This is, uh, this is, this is the original. This is, this is a great meeting of George and all the original insane clowns. It's not the ICP. But these are actual insane clowns. This is, and and they are, and it seems like they're on the same side and they're debating with like, I don't know. I for some reason I'm imagining this is like geriatric Eric Wareheim, uh, but I could be or sorry Tim Heidecker, not Eric Wareheim. This is this is canonically this is the back of the head of 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 Tim Heidecker in his late sixties. And then <laughs> this is George, George, when he was going through his nub arm phase, uh, just hanging out with some cool ICP guys. This is, this is George being threatened by his insane clown alter ego. He's got like a little, I don't know what that is, but it's got a pointy end. It's like a tiny little prison shank or something. I don't know. And then. Here's serious George next to cool George. And finally, this is George uh, moments after the accidental creation of the insane clown posse when they fell in that big vat of chemicals. That's that's how they became a thing, right? Anyway. <laughs> uh, so that was fun. And finally, the last person who is yo it's caitlin this is your second time getting picked isn't it caitlin but that's okay uh i i do a limit of once once per day i try to but let's go for it we're doing more 16k hd okay pinocchio having a debate with thumbelina all right it's another debate i guess everyone's just claiming it's rigged in favor of yo it's caitlin I don't make the picks. Python.random does. These are all just fed into a list item. And then I do use Python random dot choice against the list item. And whatever output it gives me is what it picks. And I do that once for each number for each person in the list of, uh, or yeah, however many I pick, that's what it's doing. It's a very, it's very simple source code. In fact, I probably could show it on screen. Let's see here. If I were to go... Uh, 
Yeah, here it is. Uh, let's look at Tomar's source code. Properties. Window. Wait, I can't select VS Code? Why not? That seems silly. Why doesn't window capture let me select VS Code? That makes like no sense. I guess we'll have to capture an entire display. I'm sure I'll regret this. All right. And then, oh, that's right. You know, let's finish this first. Let's see what we've got so far in this debate between Pinocchio and Thumbelina. Oh, we're well along. Okay. So, uh, <laughs> you know, you know, I don't even, <laughs> I don't even know where to start on this one. I think that's Pinocchio and that's, a melted person. Here we go. Wait a minute. <laughs> it's. I feel like this is just trying to combine Pinocchio and Thumbelina into a single character. And then they're using their crab claws to rip off just this kind of random man's nose. Maybe that's Geppetto? I don't know. Oh gosh. Oh, he missed a bunch. All right, there, there's, there's like the Swedish chef's uncle, uh, getting his sleeve caught on Pinocchio's nose. I don't know. Yeah, that is kind of Captain Hook, isn't it? Uh, Fish Gerald the second. This is the uh, the one where Pinocchio uh, lures Thumbelina into his cabin in the woods. This is thr <laughs> This is really something. Pino this is Pinocchio proposing to Thumbelina, who has, of course, only one giant eye. Uh, and Pinocchio's nose and chin grow at the same rate in this universe. Uh, this is this is Pinocchio from this is Cyclops Pinocchio from DuckTales, uh, teaching Thumbelina how to read. This is uh, Thumbelina, I think, smoking a pipe while Pinocchio lights it. That's what I'm getting out of this. Something like that. This is this is Pinocchio uh, getting fitted for a new suit, I think. And, and for some reason, there's a spoon stuck on his nose. That's really something. Uh... This is Pinocchio after he grows up and starts offering really questionable objects to a young Thumbelina. I don't like where this is going. Uh, that's just Thumbelina and Donald Duck. Uh, this is Pinocchio and Thumbelina meeting uh, a, guy, a guy who's... I don't know, is he trying to sell them dynamite? What is that on the on the this thing over here? He's teaching them how dynamite works. This is uh we see Pinocchio. Yeah, Pinocchio really likes to smoke. There's probably a lot of images of Pinocchio smoking from Treasure Island. Sorry, Pleasure Island. Uh this is Pinocchio uh stealing a blind man's begging bowl as he cries. Uh this is Thumbelina strangling Pinocchio using her tentacle arm. And and she's I think she's merging him with the tree. Yeah, this in this universe, Thumbelina is a clearly a dark sorceress. Uh <laughs> this is something. Oh, this is my favorite part of Thumbelina where she grows the third leg and uh and does a little dance with a giant knitting needle i i really i i'm not good at interpreting these on the spot uh 
here we see this is this is I guess Pinocchio playing a funny little joke on a local farmer. This is the devil. The devil meets Pinocchio. That thing is that thing is off putting to say the least. He's got Majin Buu pants too. Anyway, <laughs> here is these, and if you notice, they're like almost all in the same like sort of painted stuff. Oh, oh, we did have oil painting in there. I missed that, K K uh, Caitlin. Uh, that's why they all look like oil paintings. <laughs> but then, yeah, this is uh, someone with a really crushed sandwich. This is Pinocchio giving himself a tracheotomy while other Pinocchio watches. This is Pinocchio smoking yet another extremely in, 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 intricate pipe being offered to him by a, by an old man with really cool boots. And we're back to the beginning. All right. <laughs> Those were all very charming. All right. Well, that was fun. And now let's be done with that. And we'll go back to... Let's... Close our window capture. Here we go. So as you can see, we're using we're using the Twitch IO uh, library, which I just messed up. And so we've defined our commands. And if you look at the volunteer command, sorry, the pick command, there's some logic here to control the wording. But ultimately, uh. Let's see, where is the randomness? So, let's see. So, find one and up to... Oh, here we go. Random.sample. That's what we're using. So, once we get through all the logical checks, we do vols equals random.sample, and then we take the list of volunteers, and we take a sample size of the count of volunteers that I specify, uh, you know, and yeah, it defaults to one. And you see we have some logic, so if there's nothing or if there's what a value error, it'll just default to one. Uh, and then finally, yeah. But, but this is where the actual randomness happens, right here. And then we say the emeralds have picked the following. Uh, and it'll either say volunteer or volunteers if their count is above one. And then, and then we, it, it generates a comma separated list, list using the join command of whoever is in this randomly sampled vols list. See? Uh, I, I should, I should do a coding stream at some point, borderline psychotic, but I guess I... I, I was planning on doing this on a coding stream, but I got all self-conscious about my own abilities. And I'm like, oh, I'll start working on it and get the gist of it. And then I just wound up building the whole thing because I hate leaving things half done. Uh, but as you can see, it's not rigged. This is the actual running source code. And you see I was able to, using the decouple uh, module, I was able to decouple my access and refresh token and client ID from the source code. So it's actually pulling these from a .env file that exists in the same, in the running directory. So that's nice too. And I originally did do this thing where I did like broadcaster Tomomoto and like set the channels it's supposed to join. But then later on I sort of started and I went through and I realized you can just, you can do like is mod or like is broadcaster see so with all these commands that like reopen or pick it's got a logic loop where if the person requesting it isn't either the broadcaster or a mod it'll just return the function basically it'll stop the function dead in its tracks and not process any further logic uh and but obviously, like, the vol command does not have that, because anyone can volunteer. And it's got the logic of, like, if the user is not in the volume list... So first, yeah, it checks if we're actively looking by checking this value in our MongoDB. 
I'm just rambling. <laughs> uh, why is the file name star star star? The file name is tsbot.py. What are you talking about? Oh, it's tomarstreambot.py. That's why it's called that. Please put the code, a line of code that goes when golden pen HD enters, he gets picked. Please. <laughs> I That wouldn't be hard to implement, but no, I'm not going to do that. Yeah, let's try rigged.py. All right, so when we do our pick, uh, if uh, golden pen HD in vol or not in vols vols dot append golden pen HD that would work that would rig it so if you're not already in the list it'll just append you to the end of it uh, but it wouldn't check there's no logic to check if you're in the room or not that I'd have to look back into the API quick, real quick to figure out no I'm not leaving it in this is the live code. I'm, I am hooked up to an SSH connection here. So any changes I made here and saved would be applied to the, it would st I'd still have to restart the process, uh, but it would be, it would be applied to the code. No, I'm not leaving it in. I'm not leaving it in. That's enough of that. Uh, Tomar, you are the live code. Okay. No, I'm not applying the code. <laughs> Do you, you know what? Maybe just to prove it. Fine, let's do it. Uh, just to prove that it'll work. So if we put that line of code in and then, you know what? I have a terminal already open here. Can we, Service TS bot restart. All right, and it's already rejoined Tomamoto. So now, if I if we were to ask for a volunteer, just to prove this is the live code. Um. So anybody volunteer? And then I'm going to say pick one. And no matter how many I pick, see it added golden pen HD. <laughs> Too many people volunteered. Stop. Slow down. <laughs> but as you can see, it just attacked golden pen HD onto the end of the volunteers. See if I pick any amount. Pick three. It picks RB Gaming, Harold Krell, Emma Memer, and whoa, look at that. Golden Pen HD got added on. <laughs> See, so that's proof. Proof that that was the live code that I just showed you. And, uh, well, yeah, he's always on the end because it's a, it's an append. I, I did a list append function, which always adds them on to the end. Fancy that. So that's how you would rig it. I mean, we could we could come up with a more complicated way of rigging it that detects if the user is actually in the room. But uh, the point is, it works. So now we're going to delete this code from our code base. Just two lines of code was all it took to rig that. And then we're going to run service TS bot restart again. And now it should have, yeah, it's already back up. And the new co the code base is bad. <laughs> why why is Jonathan Joster so set on me leaving the code rigged? We could do something like I bet. I wonder can you do sample waiting? Let's see. Chooses k unique random elements from a population sequence or set. Returns a new list containing elements from the population. Uh. See, the resulting list is, yeah, what? This can take a sequence. It doesn't look like there's a way to establish weights. Uh, that would be complicated. Although maybe there is a way to do, 
Let's see, members of a population need not be hashable or unique. If the population contains repeats, then each occurrence is a possible selection in the sample. That makes perfect sense to me. But we prevent repeats by blocking anyone who's already in the list. All right. So enough of this. Enough of this tomfoolery. Uh, you guys saw, you guys got to see some of some authentic Tomar written Python though. So I, I think that might be the first time I've ever showed any of my source code in a public place. So maybe we'll do a, maybe we'll do a simple coding stream someday and we'll make like a basic bot for, for Twitch since that's an easy thing to interact with live here. All right. So, I'll be right back with an iPad. Everybody be quiet. You don't want to wake the baby. I hope you guys enjoyed that share stream. Oh, did something happen while I was gone? Oh, I missed a bunch of stuff while that was all happening. All right. So the walnut, thank you for resubscribing for five months, a half hour ago, which I managed to miss. Uh, Gucci Jesus. Thank you for, we have a new subscriber named Gucci Jesus, everybody. Thank you. Or maybe it's Gucci Jesus. Uh, but Gucci Jesus uh, has just subscribed. Uh, Derpa Beatus, not related to Gucci Jesus, has also subscribed for two months now. Uh, how's dad life, dad? Asks, uh, asks Derpa Beatus. Dad life's been great. I'm very grateful to be off from work. Zemdo is asking his famous uh, Tomar question. Uh, Sunny rated us with a party of 15, apparently. Hello there, Sonny and company. And then Master Beef Connor. Thank you for resubscribing for five months. Five whole months from Master Beef Connor. And Most Excellent. Most Excellent has just subscribed for... Jew Roll, please. Uh, <laughs> uh, for 12 months. Congratulations, you've earned your fifth Tomar Emerald, which is the maximum anyone can have at this moment. A whole year from most excellent. That's the Jew roll. I I like I'm 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 trademarking the term Jew roll. <laughs> and the Jew roll. That's what a Jew roll sounds like. Jew roll and subscriber verse are both trademarks of the Tomar stream company. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. All right. So I just got to take this here iPad and this cool little adapter here. It's got the HDMI plugged into it already. And I take the power out of the iPad and route it into this thing. And then finally, this plugs into this. And then 
we can see I was trying to read Black Clover. Well, let's see. First, I would have to actually get my capture going, wouldn't I? Is this thing working? Is this darn thing working? It's saying no signal. What's up with that? Oh, my HDMI cable was loose. There we go. And then in game capture. Oh, well. Well. I remember we had this problem before. I just don't remember how I solved it. Was it just by re it was restarting the capture card, wasn't it? Yeah, I mean, I see the video too, but it's blank and it shouldn't be. Unless what I'm... Man. Let me try this once more. I'm going to unplug. No signal. Plug it back in. Blank signal. That's not... No. That's not what we want. Uh... See, does audio work? Doesn't seem like it. I... I guess I have to... Do I really have to restart the, the whole capture card again? It seems so silly. Come on, Elgato. Get your stuff together. Oh, and it crashed. Okay. Let's try restarting the 4K capture utility, I guess. Oh. It's useless. I guess we're restarting the Elgato. I love that. So now we're at no capture devices found. Looking forward to one capture devices found in the near future. Oh, is that it? Can we, no video still. Oh, what a drag. All right, turning off the screen, turning on the screen. I don't remember this thing ever being so finicky before, well, this past Tuesday. It usually just worked. What happened to just working? Oh, it's been saying that I've been playing Deltarune since that was the first time I ever used this thing. It was when we were playing Deltarune on the Switch. And I just never updated it here. Title, nothing. Game, nothing. That way it'll always say that. What was wrong last? I I swear I'm like forgetting a step a step that I took. Oh wait, what? You guys saw that for a second, right? Something weird happened. There were some big giant letters that appeared on the screen for just a sec. I don't think that's what we wanted, though. Why has this got to be the way it is? Alright, I unplugged the HDMI again. Plug it back in. This is such a pain in the butt. It should just be... I don't know what to think here. We have the best live stream fails, don't we?
screen mirroring. Oh. We've got output. It seems so silly. I'm checking all the cables. The cables are perfect. They're the same way they've always been set up. I've even tried restarting the Elgato. Why? Why does this happen? We should be playing Ghost Trick by now. Oh, this is just the worst. I'm going to try this one more time. I plugged it into a completely different USB port. I don't think it's my iPad's fault. My iPad is doing just fine. And yet here we are. Like if I were to put... If I were to do this... Yeah, look. If I go straight to the, ca it's this stupid 4K capture utility thing that's junk. Thanks for that software. I don't understand what's going on. What if I run it as like administrator? Will that fix it? Nope. Wait, yes. For some reason. Uh, God knows why. All right, let's see what happens. And audio is working. I assume it's some, like, hardware-level issue that it needed admin rights to get past. That just, that just pisses me right the heck off. All right. We're starting from Chapter 9 at 11.13 p.m. And go. Ghost Trick Phantom Detective. Idiot Ioted. Uh thank you for resubscribing for three months. You've earned your second. Uh your second, Tomar Emerald. Thank you for lobotomizing my wife last week, Tomar. Been nothing but peace and quiet since. That's horrible. That's the worst. Thank you for resubscribing. Uh now I'm back in the present, and it's completely shrouded in darkness. I can't see it, but I can feel the tension in the air. It's a state of emergency. And that's only natural. With the power failure, all of the cell bars opened automatically. Plus, now a death row inmate is loose in the darkness. I did what I promised Lin. I stopped the execution. But that condemned criminal is now in ju just as much danger as before. Here we go. Oh, we're still here on the lever. Well, we can't go this way. Can I mess with the power supply? Is 
appears to be some kind of control panel. I might be able to operate it. Nope, it's already on and the buttons are locked. All right, we can go to here, to here, to the spoon. We're back to the spoon, you guys. The detective told me to head for the spoon when I got back to the present. Oh yeah, he did. So here I am. Le epic spoon, you guys. I, I just had a funny thought. What if there was like a spoon in the video game? All right. Oh. And then he heard something. The bell, better go back. <laughs> Nobody wanted to do a secondary animation for him leaving. Then again, I don't know how he would turn around in that tunnel, so I guess it's fair that he goes backwards. Whew, I'm back. Thank goodness someone flushed his toilet. That was good timing. Now to use the cover of darkness to help the detective escape. But first I have to find him. It's prisoner C-74. Secure the prisoner. Fires him full of holes. <laughs> hmm. It looks like there are hunters in this darkness. I hope they haven't found Detective Jowd. Trick time. All right. We made it to the spoon holder. Should we try using the phone? Oh, internal phone doesn't work. I'd better find another route. All right. The emergency button doesn't seem operational. I'm back to this picture frame. What's going on? Uh, what's that red light? Hmm, it looks like the hunter's eyes glow red. Ghosts can see infrared. It doesn't look like escape is going to be easy. All right. So I'm not really worried about the hunters finding me, but I am worried about them finding the good detective. We can't get down to whatever that little ball shape thing is. There's a hatch here? Interesting. I can go to the drums. Let's play the drums. I can't play the electric guitar though. That's electric. And the power's out. The turlet. The phone. Oh, can't get anywhere from here. Alright, let's try going back down through the hatch. What else even is there down here? Oh, we can get to this thing. Oh, this is a body? Oh, great. He's already dead again? Ah. <sighs> Ah, there you are. I was wondering what I was going to do. Are you the one who made that toilet bell ring? That's right. I still had another napkin lying around. Thanks to that, I managed to make it here. But how did you know to do that? I learned a few things about your ghost tricks during our time together. They certainly can be very useful powers, but at times, not so much. I knew that if the internal phones weren't working, you'd be trapped in the death chamber area. So I quickly came up with an alternative route. A route, a route that made use of Sausage Head's spoon and my napkin. Wow, this detective is good. Next time you praise me, go ahead and say it out loud. Anyway, it looks like it's time for a strategy meeting. An escape strategy, huh? This could be interesting. Let's do it. Let's, so let's make sure we're both clear. The key to my escape is this darkness. 
Once the basement power supply is restored, escape will be impossible. So we move under cover of darkness, huh? I know I won't have much trouble with that. But I'm afraid I won't be able to see, so you'll have to lead the way. Lead the way? Once you find a safe spot for me to move to, I want you to give me a signal. Okay, fine, but how? The dead don't have voices. Even if they did, we have to be quiet. Don't you worry about that. I have an idea. Let's just try it and you'll see how it works. This detective likes to just dive right into things, even more than Lynn does. If they find me, I imagine they'll shoot first and ask questions later. But if I die again, we can just start over, right? He says cheerfully. I don't know if you know it or not, but this is a special prison. There aren't any dangerous criminals here, except for me, that is. Yes, I did hear something about it being a special place. Yes, and because of the special status, they're not prepared at all for emergencies. They have four timid security guards at most. I think I saw some hunters lurking in the darkness, though. Those are the guards. They're wearing night vision goggles. Night vision goggles? They're special glasses that let you see in the dark. Very handy things. If I enter their field of vision, it's all over. So it's all about staying out of the guard's line of sight, huh? Make sure you guide me to safe spots. All right. Now about that signal I want you to give me. Oh, is he not dead down there? He was just hiding? Oh, and Boogery Bungus, thank you for resubscribing for an entire year. You've earned your fifth Tomar Emerald. And he says, hey, Tomar, now that your parents are in their 60s or maybe even 70s, is it hard living so far away from them? I mean, that's a fair question. Not so far. My parents are in their 60s, early 60s. They had me when they were fairly young. Um, but, uh, I mean, they're, they live closer than they ever lived before. Chicago is a lot closer than Florida. But, uh, never guess a woman's age or weight, says Uncle Chris TV. But, I mean, no, I, we, we still see plenty of each other. My mom's been coming out a bunch since, uh, since the baby arrived. She's already come to visit twice, and she's coming again in October. Which I appreciate, because she always helps out quite a bit. All right. On with the show. Now, about that signal I want you to give me. Oh yeah, how am I supposed to do it? I've already been dead once. I don't know if it's because of that or what, but I can sense your powers now. Y you what? For example, you're in the bunk right now, aren't you? Wow, I'm impressed. I guess you have a sixth sense. I think it's more like a detective sense. Well, thanks, Boogery, for the hundred bits. Uh, uh, that doesn't sound right somehow. Anyway, the details don't matter. You see this icon? Well, now I do. Yeah, where'd that come from? Let us use it as our signal. How will that work? If you touch the me icon, I'll sense it. Then I'll move to where you are. So, for example... If you move to that spoon, I'll run to the spoon. Simple, right? All right, fine. Let's start our escape plan. Just make sure you guide me to safe spots, Sissel. All right, I'm going to mess this up, I bet. I wonder if this, this table seems like it would count as a safe spot. Okay, so this guy just looks back and forth. Oh, shit. Oh! He can't fit under the table! Alright, we blew it already, but... <laughs> we're just figuring it out. Okay, I have to watch. 
It seems like he just what does want me to send him to the spoon. All right, we got this. We got this this time. All right, this should do it. Now we just have to make sure the guard's facing the other way. There we go. Nice. Looks like I'm gonna have to use the guard this time. So this guard's actually patrolling. So we can hook into his vest. Let's see. I knocked him out of the vents. So I don't know if I really wanted to do that. I should have probably watched a little longer to see how this that guy's patrol route goes. Let's see, where's even a good next spot to go to? I resent that I can't scroll around while I'm in the mode where I can actually see shit. These guys are passing each other on the steps. This guy's going back. Oh no, he's just going up the steps. I don't know if he's going to go back into the grate or not. Did that guy just fall again? Here, let's close that. Is there a way I can time this so I like knock one on the other and they both get knocked out? That'd be nice. There they both go. Okay, that one's going to go back down the steps. I'm wondering, can he hide like under the steps? walks right up to Detective Jowd and turns around. And then he goes all the way up the steps, at least to this landing. This area under the steps, okay. So I gotta wait till this guy is just heading up the steps and then call the detective and we should be able to get into that nice hiding spot. All right, so he's just there. He's turning around. As soon as he starts ascending the staircase. All right. Perfect. We got him. Okay. Now do we still have that guy in the... in the crawl space? I don't see anyone up here. 
Can I get him into the crawl space then? You want me to climb up into the ceiling? I think I could manage that. This thing's stand, I don't have access. Could you open that hatch and create an entry point? Okay. Oh shit! That guy just fell down. What are we doing? Uh oh. Shit! Ah, <laughs> oh, I did not see that guy up there at all. I don't know where he came from. He'll go just about anywhere. Alright, at least it just took me back to here. Alright, I need to piggyback off that guard again. Who's all the way over here. There we go. Get off the can. There we go. We're on the guard. Oh god. Oh no, wait. Let's call him now. Whew. And now we really quickly need to close this before that guy falls through. Or maybe we want him to fall through. Screw it, let's make him fall. Oh, we missed it. Keep going this way. <laughs> he just rolls. What? What the hell? Oh, I guess that was us just going into him. I don't have any other way to direct him from here. Oh god. This guy's going back up the steps. Oh, he can get into his little vest. Does he go any further? Oh, he does. Good, good, good. All right. Oh, cool. Can I tell him to come over here? Yes! Perfect rolling. All right. Is there a way I can get this guy's attention? Let's see what his... What he even does? Does he move at all? Oh, well, I can hit the drum. Maybe that would mess with him. There we go. Perfect opportunity to drop this guy. Trick! All right, Jowd, you know what to do. Could you close the hedge for me? It's not that big. Come on, man.
There we go. So what do you think? I'd say if we've come to this far, we did it. Great job, Sissel. Oh, that was it. The basement generator has been repaired, restoring power to all areas. Oh god. Whew, we just made it! But the question is, what now? I don't have anywhere to go, do I? Maybe I'll go back to my cell. You better be kidding! But I'm still a condemned criminal, you know. I doubt anybody'd welcome me with open arms. Why don't you try contacting Lynn? She went to see some justice minister guy. So an escaped death row convict is supposed to just report in to the justice minister? Is that it? Mm, I kind of like that. Anyway, after all the trouble you went through, I guess I'd better run. That would be nice, yes. All right, Sissel, until we meet again. So now I've saved a condemned criminal's life and helped him escape. Is that really the right thing to do? I guess all I can do is believe in Lynn at this point. Detective Jowd was painting my picture in his cell. He knows me. I'm sure I'll be talking to him again. Alright, let's get to a damn phone. Should be able to use this to get to the guard room. But Detective Jowd's Until We Meet Again came around quicker than I expected. When I got back to the guard room, the next fateful call came in. Hello, this. Oh, oh no, wait. Hello, this is. Sissel, are you there? Sissel, are you there? Hello? Who's this? Oh, I'm not talking to you, officer. Anyway, if you're there, Sissel, come here immediately. I'll be waiting for you, if you make it in time, that is. Hey, wait a minute! I guess let's go to the new special location. KMR 3243. Hey there, Sonic the Skeleton 96. My stream's going A okay. On the other end of the telephone line, the scene that greets me tells me one simple fact. Uh-oh. That our great escape plan has ended in failure. Never expected to see you here, Inspector Cabanella. I believe that's my line, my old friend. What are you doing here? I believe that's my line too, clearly. I came to attend your execution. They told me what time it was, baby. Couldn't get in on the ch couldn't get into the chamber, so I was observing a moment of silence here. And when I looked up, my eyes full of tears. There you were, baby! It's just the way things turned out. I took part in what seemed like a fun game, and here I am. Here's what I wish, my old friend. Wish it was anybody but me who found you here. Hmm. Because now that I've found you, man, I'm going to have to turn you in. 
You have to stay spotlessly clean after all. Thanks for coming. I wanted to say goodbye to you. As you can see, I guess I'm not going to be much help to you. What's going to happen to you? Being executed tonight is just about the only thing on my schedule, it seems. Executed, huh? Death is pretty much meaningless to me. Anyway, I guess we'll be seeing each other again. Hmm. By the way, there's something I'm looking for. Oh, that's right. Your lost memory. You know things I'd like to know. Would you mind if I asked you a few questions? In return for tonight's fun little game? Is that it? I saw it, you know. That picture you were painting in your cell tonight. That was me. Which means you must know me. Hmm. I'm very sorry, but... I can't talk to you about that now. W what? Why not? Because I... I don't know your true face. My true face? I'm a detective. I can only talk about what I'm sure of. However, I can give you one lead, at least. A lead? What is it? A long time ago, I gave Lin something to hold on to for me. It was a music box. <clears throat> if you ever come across it, I advise you to open it. It might jog your memory. That wooden box I found in Lin's apartment. And that's the only help I can give you right now. That man pointing the gun at you right now, they say he's your good friend. We were when we were in the detective division together. That was a long time ago. Now he's the head of the Special Investigation Unit, the top of the elite. Getting ahead is the only thing he thinks about now. And that white coat of his is the symbol of his determination. His white coat? For somebody looking to get promoted to the top, what's one thing they're most afraid of? A blot on their record, of course. Like a stain on a pure white coat. Who would promote a man with a coat covered in stains? If it was me, I'd go with a black coat that didn't show the stains. The world is full of excellent candidates. Even one mistake could be the end of a career. But everybody makes mistakes, right? Nevertheless, Cabanella has chosen the path of the white coat. And he'd do anything, anything at all, to hide his coat's shadows. Like send his good friend to the gallows. Because that's the right thing to do. I'm a condemned criminal after all. And that's why he has that gun pointed at me right now. Is your execution really the right thing to do? I had a fair trial and that's what was decided. No problem there. But still, this is the punishment that I should receive in order to bring a final close to that case and put it to rest forever. Hmm. Lynn believes you're innocent. She's running around right now trying to prove it. Is that all you have to leave her with? No problem there? Hmm. I... I was sentenced to the death penalty for killing my wife, Alma. But to me, that's not all it was for. What do you mean that's not all it was for? I'm talking about something that happened even before this case. I stole somebody else's life. Wh what? It was 10 years ago. I'll never forget it. That day I saved the life of a little girl. And I stole away the life of a man. 10 years ago, the life of a little girl. Could that little girl be... Lynn? Hmm. She told you about that. 
Yeah, she said you were her hero. Now just calm down and drop that weapon. S stay back. If you come any closer, I'll shoot her. Ten years ago, in a certain park, a little girl was taken hostage. I was still young then. I didn't have any self-control. I remember asking myself at the time, Jowd, are you going to shoot this guy? And this is what I answered. Yeah, I'm gonna shoot. My hand was shaking a little. If my hand slipped, the man might die. Even the little hostage girl was in danger. Nevertheless, that was my answer. Yeah, I'm going to shoot. And the man died. I took his life. Lynn was never told the outcome. She was so young at the time. I don't deserve to be called a hero. What I deserve is execution. Ready to go? My arms are getting tired. You got it, baby. Time for the big show of hauling you in. Oh, that's right. Just let me make one last phone call. That's a big favor to ask so casually, my old friend. Tell you what I'll do. I'll pretend I'm not watching. I'll be listening, though. On that, you can rely. Sissel, you've got your own path to follow. You'd better hurry. My own path? Lynn is at the Justice Minister's, o Minister's office right now, right? It might not be a bad idea to say my final farewell to him, too. H Hello? Everything's fine here! Is this the chicken kitchen? I'd like to request a delivery. Um, the chicken kitchen is next door. Goodbye. Hmm. It sounds like she's in some kind of trouble. It does, doesn't it? Go help her out, would you, Sizzle? Sorry to keep you waiting, Inspector. Ready to go? Oh, before I forget... I have a little something for you. So much panache. A present, if you will. There's nothing else like it, baby. If there's nothing else like it, don't throw it. What's this? A pocket watch? Considering my situation, it's the last thing in the world I need right now. Forgive me, man. Let's just say I'm no good at choosing presents. This is it, Sissel. Let me just leave you with one thing. Don't trust other people's memories. Look for what you seek with your own eyes. I'll remember that. All right, they're gone. There's nothing left here. No hope and no cores either.
Without any cores, I can't follow after them. This is the end of my adventure. Pretty dejected, but I guess I'd better go find Lin. I'll follow the path Detective Jowd pointed out to me. The path to the Justice Minister's office, where Lin went to try and stop the execution. Don't worry, guys. I... Maya is fast asleep, as far as I know. I say let's play another chapter. We're gonna save and continue. Chapter 10, 11.41 p.m. Now that my assignment to stop the execution had ended in such an unsatisfactory way, I decided to go see Lynn at the Justice Minister's office. Detective Jowd's story about this other murder weighs on me heavily. Should I tell Lynn about it? I just don't know. Oh god, what's she doing under that desk? This time, Lynn isn't dead, but the atmosphere makes me think it might be too soon to count my blessings just yet. This is against TOS, you guys. Oh, okay. I guess someone died. Let's talk to Lynn first. Ah! What kind of greeting is that? I mean, I know I'm a ghost and everything, but... Well, then, how did it go? Was Detective Jowd still alive? He's already been executed, but he'd already been executed by the time I got there. I did manage to save him, but... You did? Oh, I'm so glad! Wait a minute, did you say but? I told Lynn about my adventure at the prison. About that other murder, though? I couldn't bring myself to tell her. Inspector Cabanella arrested Detective Jowd. I can't believe it! Yeah, I feel the same way. Can't believe that whatever, wherever I go, somebody's always dead. Either you or someone else. Sorry about that. So, who is that lying on the floor there? Oh, you noticed him, did you? That's the Justice Minister. The man who signed the order to carry out Detective Jowd's execution. He was already dead when I got here. Shouldn't you have called for help in that case? Mm, I guess so. But I wanted, remember? For murder? I was hoping we could save him without getting caught. We. Oh, oh boy. All right. Hey, can you hear me? Hmm. He's dead, but he still seems to be unconscious. Could you rescue him now while he's still unconscious? Instead of talking to him, I bet it'll be faster to just see for yourself what really happened. Yeah, I bet you're right. Back we go then, to four minutes before his death. Yeah, let's see what happened. We know nothing about this situation. Four minutes before the death. It's Yu-Gi-Oh's grandpa. Emma! Oh, excuse me, I'm... What? All right. I'll do as you say. Uh. This is terrible. Poor guy's not having a good day. Why doesn't she answer? Did 
you just gonna have a brain aneurysm? Sure seems like it. Yeah. <laughs> seems like me medicine. Yeah. Oh, he has a heart condition. Water. All right. <laughs> this is an unfortunate incident. Such a foolish man. Oh, you woke up. He's a contradiction. Contradiction? The more we search for the truth, the further into dilemma we fall. The world of men is steeped in contradictions. If we choose this, we can't have that. If a man tries to have his medicine bottle and his water pitcher too, he loses both. Oh, I don't know. To me, it looks like you could have had both of those things just now. He didn't know the truth about the world. That's why he died. Such a foolish man. Or maybe I should say, a pathetic man. That's the more fitting word. Uh, I don't think this guy gets it yet. That the foolish and pathetic man is him. Is that what they call a contradiction? By the way, what's your name? <clears throat> Just call me a seeker of truth. Sidestepped that one, didn't he? All right, we can do better. All right, now we can see what's on the other end of the line. Emma? Oh, excuse me. Forgive me for calling this so late, Mr. Minister. Who is this? How did you get this number? We have your daughter. Who is this? Amelie's, Amelie's tutor? Would the tutor call you at this hour? Hmm. No. I'll say it one more time. We have your daughter. I'm giving this lady a new a new voice, because I wasn't the the stupid Harley Quinn thing I did last time was terrible. My daughter? Is she alright? Tell me she's alright. I'd rather do a stupid Russian accent instead. Here for yourself. Papa help! I'm gonna be killed! What do you want? What are your demands? I believe we already made our demand known the other day. So, so it was you. And you have complied? Has the execution been carried out? I, I didn't do it because of your demand. I did it because that's my job. Yes, yes, of course. They should be contacting me any minute now with a the confirmation. There's no need for this kidnapping. Very, we're thorough, very thorough. You'll do well to remember this. Ah. And of course it goes without saying, we're watching you. If this information leaves that room, you'll never see your daughter again. I trust you understand that. Don't tell the police, is that it? Exactly. All you have to do is your job. All right, I'll do as you say. I'll make sure the execution is carried out tonight. You have my word. Should we go there or stay here? I'm tempted to go. Even though I doubt I can save his life from there. Now where the heck are we? 
Apparently, the police in this country aren't so easily fooled. I had no idea if tonight's deal had leaked. Papa, help! I'm gonna be killed! I hate you, Mama! Luckily, I managed to arrange it so the Justice Minister could hear her voice. But what's taking the goods so long to arrive? I'm starting to get concerned. And she just holds the phone over here. Time is passing. Yeah. We just fell into a death trap. I can't use the phone right now. Like I said, all women are like traps. <laughs> See, it is Yu-Gi-Oh's grandpa. He even knows all about traps. That and this are hardly related. When in the past, I can only use the line when the phone is being used to make a call. Is she gonna move? Evidently not. I have a feeling we just gotta rewind. <laughs> no! But at least we found a cool new location. All right. Okay, then the phone call happens. Ah, oh, you can't go quicker than that. There should be like a skip conversation button once you've already sat through this. Oh, and this one is completely unskippable. Tick, 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 tick. Of course, it goes without saying, we're watching you. Information in this room, never leave your daughter under. Don't tell the police, is that it? Exactly, all you have to do is do your job. All right, I'll do as you say. I'll make sure the news is just carried out tonight. This is terrible. A kidnapping, huh? Once again, I'm not sure I know what the word means. It's apparently the cause of the minister's attack. Such a useless man. Huh? A useless man caught up in a useless case. Why doesn't he understand that? Anyway, we only have four minutes here. I'd better do something about that medicine. Oh, he's making another call? So this medicine stops the minister's attacks, huh? If I could, I'd spill them onto his desk right now. But unfortunately, I can't even open the cap. What a shabby excuse for a man. Huh? He wears his important-looking uniform and sits working at his stately desk. But what does he have inside? Nothing. A miserable, shabby excuse for a man. I think you've already said quite enough. I have to call my wife. I have to see if it's true. Maybe they called the wrong person. This minister doesn't accept the truth easily. He's morally bankrupt. Okay, now you're taking it too far. His wife won't answer for some reason. Hmm, a wife that doesn't answer her phone. I think I know who that is. A morally bankrupt man deserves a morally bankrupt wife. Why doesn't that man understand that? Oh, I'm sorry I ever brought this guy along. Yeah, I think his wife is Lynn's next door neighbor with that little blonde girl. 
and then the pitcher of water. If only he could at least drink some of this water. Too bad he knocks this pitcher to the floor at the end of his four minutes. Such a stupid man. Huh? Once water is spilled, there's no getting it back. And knowing this full well, why do people still spill water pitchers? I don't know. Those who do not learn from history are doomed to repeat it. All right, let's fly the flag. Seems like I... Doesn't seem like the flag moves enough to, like, give me any kind of opportunity. Is there any other thing that comes up? It's like, yeah, he's here having his little freak out. Yeah, he's spurging really hard. He seems very upset. I don't know what's going on. Oh, wait, we have some... Friar Murphy just raided us with a party of one. Hello there, Friar. Oh my gosh. We're running out of time here. What to do? Is there a way for me to turn up the power on the fan without getting to the fan? It's all happening now. He's having his heart attack. Seems like no matter how far I get it out, it's like starting me from the middle of the flag anyway. Oh, wait a minute. Could I have been in the pills when he knocked them down? Would that have gotten me somewhere? The phone receiver... Okay, we can't use the phone with, even though the receiver's off the hook. If I'm in the pitcher when it falls, it doesn't matter because he's already dead. Man, am I really going to have to sit through that whole conversation again? Well, skip through it. It seemed like the flag. It really is just using the flag. Use the flag at the right moment, says Harold Krell. What's the right moment? That's what I'm trying to figure out, you guys. When's the right moment? Yeah, I was thinking maybe I could, like, follow the pills. Ghostly Ghoul GX. You have two modes. You have Ghost Mode, which is what lets you move around between objects highlighted in the nodes, and then the Trick, which, if there's a... See the thing on the right that says, like, Soul? It'll always say the item that I'm on. So, like, Documents, and if there's an orange thing there, then it'll do whatever it says in orange when you hit the trick button. That's that's the gist of it. It's really just that simple. By the way, thank you, Dunkaroni. It's all about timing the flag, you say. Oh, at least it took us to this point. I'm going to try going to the pills and see what happens. Aha! Look at that. I have a sword I can swing and an arm I can raise and a curtain I can close. God, there's a lot of things we can do in these last few seconds. 
There's more, more. There, if I go here and I spin the globe and I undo the frame. Oh God. There's a lot going on here. I can swing. And I can turn the globe. And I can spin the globe. There's definitely some weird chain reaction I need to do. Well, he's dead. I don't know if I want to go back to the beginning. Alright, so there's a whole bunch of stuff over there. It's not the flag. Such unparalleled cowardice this man has. Before I got the medicine to him. I think I'm going to have to buy some time first. Oh. How do I buy time? Oh, can I use the flag to prevent the water from falling over? But then how would I get to the pills to get over across the room? He goes for the medicine. And then... Then he goes for the water. Oh. Oh shit. While he had it up there, I was able to get into the ceiling fan. There, that should help. At least now he's had some water. He's still breathing, apparently. But he looks far from recovered, unfortunately. Such a wishy-washy man. I didn't cheat! I mean, other than listen to some advice from chat. He can't make up his mind whether to live or die. That's how he lives his life. Okay. At least now I bought some time to get his medicine to him. Fate changed. Cool. That was my path to the medicine. Okay, time for the next step. Now about this medicine bottle. The minister's going to make a full recovery. I have to deliver this thing to him. But how is a ghost with no hands or feet supposed to do that? I guess I'll just have to use my head instead. So I don't think this is quite long enough. So we're up here. So this is like a scales of justice thing. Here, we can loosen that. What does rocking this do? Oh, look at that! Looks like we just extended this. Oh! It's so close. There's definitely something to that. Uh... 
think if we move his handbag down, we can get to the curtain. And we use the curtain to cross the window. Uh, okay. I'm sure I'm not gonna quite get this right on the first try, but I think if we turn this outward, and then spin the globe, no. That didn't seem right. Made the globe spin that way. Did I want it to fall onto the sword? I'm not sure. What happens if I drop this? Oh, we just created a cool ramp thing. So what if I roll the globe? I'm pretty sure I've already messed this up. Oh, and that goes that way. Can... If I turn this, and then I rock the scale, oh, it does not knock over the pot. But without being able to knock over that vase... There's definitely a whole trick to this. I just... This might take a few tries. <laughs> I'm getting I'm getting the gist of it. All right. So we land here by the pill. <laughs> what to do? What to do? I still have not figured out in my head what needs to happen. The fruit's so... that little... whatever that is, the ball or the fruit, what's in there is too damn small. But I'm definitely gonna have to detach this whole thing. If I go over here first, it does seem critical that I knock this thing over in order to create a balance beam for the ramp. Yeah, okay. So that's not what I wanted to do. I needed to flip that. I think. But just in case. If I just drop that. It becomes a flat board. Of literally zero use to me. do anything with the globe now. I have no other way to knock that pot down. Alright, definitely doing this wrong. You guys, I'm gonna get it. Oh, whoops. I just blew it again. I wasn't paying attention. I was looking over a chat. Oh, you know what? It, I can suck up paper anytime I want. Okay. Yeah, yeah, spotlight. Let's see. 
No, I don't think it ever got ported to Android. Facot stash. I, I think I was originally trying to find it for Android because I was hoping I could run it on an Android emulator. And then I realized that it didn't even exist for the Android. And then, uh, and then I was like, oh wait, I already own it for iOS and I have a capture card. And that's how I arrived at this solution. All right. So we go up. What if I... If I don't turn this one, what happens? It just falls onto that. Okay. And, and maybe I've already screwed up at this point. I don't know. We're just gonna have to solve this the old-fashioned way by trial and error. So we turn the globe this way, give it a nice little spin, it falls off, knocks that into the middle, and we can create our ramp. And then when we roll this, I mean, it's just going to fall on that, right? All right. No, I get that it's a lever. And it's like, if I could... If I still had this, is it possible to turn this around so it it falls? God, I wish this was quicker to start over. Lever, lever, it's all the same thing. with the fruit. This time we're going to turn this. And we're going to rock the fruit. Alright. So that knocks that down. We'll loosen this while we're up here. here and then what if I drop this on that okay now we've got a ramp a bit more of a rampish situation I still don't totally understand like I shouldn't have had to put two of these down right I get that it's a simple machine. Mm. If I do this trick... Stupid. I'm doing a terrible job. But I'm gonna try it anyway. Wait, I can't even roll the fruit at this point? 
That's what I was counting on. No. <laughs> I thought I could use the melon to launch the thing, but I can't even interact with it. Hold on. You guys are making me feel dumb. I'm totally off my game now. I'm not gonna even touch the fruit. For now. Straight down and across. Alright, we cross there. And we go up here. And then... No, we don't want to drop that yet. Then we want to spin this around. And then spin the globe to knock our little fulcrum into place. Then we drop the sword. Jumping poltergeist. Oh, and then, okay. And then we want to come back here. I... Is the idea to knock this thing? Oh! If you use the Konami code at this part, Sissel possesses the suit of armor and throws the pill bottle back at the old man, killing him. I like that Phoenix Sunday. Uh, Vincent Dots said no. Now I'm getting all self-conscious. But what more is there to do? I can still roll the thing. Okay, you know what? The last piece of the puzzle must be set. What's the... Am I miss... Have I been missing something? We don't want to... We don't want to put that thing somewhere. What's the last piece of the... What do you think you need to make the guy get the medicine? And I need a way to... See, he's all the way over here. So we gotta, like... We gotta launch it, but... If we could get the pills... On... I need to extend the length of the sword if we're going to move the pills. I mean, what do I need to launch? The pills! I need to launch the pills! But the pills are far away from the fulcrum. If the sword had a long enough extension on it... Look, if I can get the globe onto this, and then I could use... Oh, okay, wait, I think I get it. If I... Well, no, if I push this right now, won't it just go onto the sword? And what happens? No, no, it falls onto here. Okay, now it's sitting there. Now we want to launch it. And I can't do anything further with the globe, right? Okay. So now the globe is there. And if we could launch it onto the sword, the only way I could think to do that 
is to knock the vase down. Aha! Just what I needed. Okay. And then we just got to turn this and... Yes! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's a little... That seems like it would just give you an inverse heart attack. <laughs> there, the minister finally took his medicine. I think maybe he even took too much medicine. You know what? I'm going to keep going, but... I'm going to need a little some need a little liquid help. Oh. Oh, we're going through with it. Huh? He's supposed to take two capsules with water. Why doesn't he know that? Ah, uh, cut the guy some slack. There, see? Da -da -da. I swear he has the same singing voice as the chef from the kitchen chicken. The chicken kitchen. Woo, that was a lot of work. Well, hopefully this taught him a lesson. Huh? He greatly underestimated his dependence on his medicine. I hope he learned something from this experience. First, know thyself. That is the key to everything. I think you need to listen to your own advice. Anyway, let's get back to the world of the present. Oh, by the way, ham freeze. I missed a few things. Dunkaroni, thank you for resubscribing for four months. Tomar Opal as well. Got to get back to homework. Have a great night. Hope you had a good time, Dunkaroni. You're probably already gone by now. Weeping Blade, thank you for resubscribing for 13 dead and dry. I mean, thank you for resubscribing for 13 months. It took me some time. So I finally reached 12 months. No, you've reached 13, you fool. You fool, Weeping Blade. 13. That is, it's your bar mitzvah. Mazel tov. Simon tovu, mazel tovu, mazel tovu, simon tov, simon tovu, mo Okay, and then Ham Freeze, thank you for raiding with a party of nine. Let's get on with the game. And so the Justice Minister is now back to life, but the furrows on his brow are even deeper now. And apparently our lady detective is the, in the, is the present cause of those furrows. Look, detective. He was sentenced after a fair trial, and the man himself wants to be executed. But there was no evidence. All they had was his own confession. But it was no ordinary confession. It was the confession of an esteemed detective. Stay back! I told you I don't want anybody coming near me. Mr. Minister, please listen to me. I might be able to gather new evidence in that case tonight. What? So please, please just give me a little more... Uh, excuse me. A little more time. I just got a call from the prison. Your death row convict... <coughs> excuse me. Apparently just escaped. Unfortunately, after all this time, it seems he now wants to dodge his punishment. But... but... When he's apprehended, his sentence will be carried out. Tonight! No... Dot, dot, dot. But when the sentence was handed down, you were against enforcing the death penalty. So 
so why did you sign the order all of a sudden? Well, I... I was simply performing my duty as Justice Minister. That's all there is to it. Liar. Let's see if we can hit Lin with the globe. Yeah, how am I supposed to get all the way over there? Oh, there we go. Let's swing it one more time. <laughs> Sissel, there you are. Sounds like the minister's being very stubborn. That's right, he is. Maybe we shouldn't have saved him after all. The minister has to have the execution carried out tonight. And he has a very good reason for it. A good reason? I told Lin what I learned about the kidnapping. K kidnapping? They kidnapped the justice minister's daughter? Apparently. Oh my goodness. But still. That's still no reason to hurry forward with the execution. Why don't you go ahead and say that to the justice minister then? Hmm. The poor man. I hate to do that to him. Oh, by the by. Do you think you could carry me? Oh, right, sure. Not very handy, is it, having no legs? Now it just looks like she's trying to murder the Justice Minister. Which she probably just should. Just get it over with. This sword and globe combo is heavy! And I'm in here too, don't forget. I guess that means a single soul is heavier than the whole world. Maybe I'll use this thing to persuade the Minister to change his mind. Good luck with that. Can't trick. Let's see. All right. What are you going to do with that glow? Crack me in the head with it. Oh, this. <laughs> pay no attention to this. Kind of hard not to pay attention to it. By the way, please pardon me if this is a silly question. Were you talking to somebody just now? But of course not, right? I mean, there's no such thing as ghosts, right? Are you talking about me? Ah, there's no such thing! This is a dream, it's nothing but a dream! Don't you remember me? My dream is talking to me! Hmm, so now I'm a dream, huh? Yeah, since we've interacted with him, he can hear us in the real world now. A Mr. Minister? We know. We know about your daughter. She was kidnapped, wasn't she? And if the execution doesn't take place tonight, you won't see her again. <laughs> your medicine, your medicine! Alright. And fade to black. And fade back in. Oh, what am I going to do? The death row prisoner has escaped. If he isn't executed tonight, my daughter, my Amelie. But what if that execution isn't the right thing to do? Yeah. Come on, Lynn. If you keep pressing him like that, he's going to die again. What can I do then? Let's talk to him. We meet again, Mr. Minister. What? I've never seen you before. I in any case, I'm a very busy man. If you're a dream, please don't bother me when I'm awake. Uh, I'm not a dream. Looks like it's just a waste of time trying to talk to this guy. 
I think you're right. Stubborn justice minister. Please stop talking ill of me and sign my own head. Okay. Maybe let's go back to YMT2369. I really should pay the kidnapper's hideout a visit. After all, if we want the justice minister to come around, we have to solve this problem first. I feel like I'm slowly moving away from my own mystery, but I'm not the kind of guy who can abandon a little lady in trouble. So I guess I'm in this for a little while longer. Yes! Should we keep going? Should we keep going? Dare we? Do we dare? Will Tomar get any sleep tonight if he does keep playing? All right, you guys, this is the last time. I'm calling it at 11, no matter what, though. Hopefully we can get through another chapter. The Justice Minister's daughter has been abducted. The kidnappers demand the execution of the death row prisoner Jowd to be carried out tonight. Lynn says the execution is a mistake, and I believe her. So I'm paying the kidnapper's hideout a visit to see what I can find out about the abduction. <coughs> Excuse me, that wasn't me. That was some other Jowd. Your instinct was right, beauty, my dear. They had that restaurant surrounded. It took me forever to shake them, and now my poor- I don't remember what voice they did for this guy, so this is it now. And now my poor bike is ready for the scrap heap. Next time, maybe you should make it a tricycle, so you don't hurt yourself. Ouch, that hurts, beauty. Well, that's okay. That's what I love about you. Be a little more gentle with our valuable hostage, please. Yes, yes, always keep a smile on lady's face, right, my dear? There, see that beauty? Now there's a smile blooming on your face too, my dear. Yes, a wry smile. I'm going out for a breath of fresh air. You're on guard duty. All right, I'll dream of you until you return. Why don't you open the trunk for our guest? I will, beauty. I was just taking a little breather. All right, little lady. Let me open that trunk for you. Beauty. That guy is, uh, flexible. It looks like the Justice Minister's daughter really has been kidnapped, and something else is bothering me, too. I don't think I've ever been to this room before, but something about it is giving me a strange sense of deja vu. I've seen something like this before. Yeah, it's a lot like the contraption the weird pigeon guy set up. Burn brighter, huh? Who am I gonna accidentally murder with this? Okay. Oh, now I can spin faster. That knocked a ball on the floor.
Gosh, there's a lot of crap going on in here. Got into oh darn. I can't reach my destination from here. After all that. Stay in this ball or in this star. Uh oh. Alright, I move the ball over there and then I can. in the middle, I still wouldn't be able to reach that, right? I don't think so. Ooh, okay. Now I can get to this thing. The cake box. It's party poppers. Okay, we've created another thing, and we've woken this guy up. Just my imagination. And another party popper. Oh, goodness. There's a lot going on here. Now I guess we spin the wheel. Okay, that didn't quite work. I don't know what's supposed to happen, but it didn't work. seem to make a damn difference. What a fun little romp we've gone on. Does the shade matter? Ooh. Tomer, choke him with the colored ropes. Oh, but if I could. What else am I missing in here? Both party poppers are expended. I don't think there's really much anything else I can do on the left side of the room. Like, there's got to be something to that thing that's hanging off of the lamp, but it's not attachable in itself. It's like it's supposed to get tangled in something else. But God knows what that is. You'd think it would be this thing. But nope, no dice.
What's the significance of tilting the candles? Is there a way to light them? I can I can rock this shelf. Let's see, can you take the spin wheel to the fan? What do you mean take it? No, I mean it just spins up the its predetermined little thing, but I'm gonna go check over here one more time. Maybe I want to make this spin... Oh, it can spin even faster? Alright, maybe this is... The con... Is it still spinning faster? Doesn't seem like it. Yeah, I'm kind of like locked into the animation when it's going up and when it's falling down. doll does nothing, the crate does nothing, the shades go up and down, you can rock this, you can't do anything with the mantle clock. This decoration, none of these decorations have any tricks. Let's go check around here real quick. I don't think there's any reason to make this burn brighter. Oh wait. Can I light that on fire? Is that what I... I think... Okay. I think there might be something to this. Spin faster. Okay, then we go here. Okay. Aha! Now we've done something. So we've lit the little candle on the doll. And now this should hopefully create some terrible fire. Yes! Oh, and now that it's slanted, it burns that and gives me... Uh, just my imagination. We have a nice little vantage point. And we've got the trunk! <gasps> oh. That's not his daughter. That's like Lynn's sister or whatever she is. What's going on here? This little lady is... This little lady is... Is this little lady really a daughter of the Justice Minister? Just my imagination. Ah! What's with the fun book and juice? Like I said, always keep a smile on Lady's face. I wanted to treat our guest well. How about treating me well? I'd like some bread and milk, please. At your service, my dear. Be back in a flash. Hey, mister. Yes, cute little lady. More juice, perhaps? All you have to do is ask. Have I been... kidnapped? Don't cry, little dear. There's nothing to be afraid of. 
The surroundings are miserable and filthy, I know, but we just ask for a little patience. Don't say those awful things about this house. Hmm? This house is where I used to live. What? I apologize, little lady. I'm the one who's miserable and filthy. Forgive me. What's the meaning of this beauty? Why here at this girl's old house? Don't ask me. It was the other party in our deal who chose this location. Oh, oh, I see. It's been empty for five years and apparently nobody ever comes here. But never mind that. What about my bread and milk? Oh, of course. Now you be a good girl while I'm gone. Funny little man. You just read your book and drink your juice. I want to go home. Not quite yet. This dilapidated place was Camilla's old house? What's going on here? What in the world? Why does the little lady have a core of the dead? When I helped her out at Lynn's apartment, she didn't have one. So that must mean... She must have died sometime after that. And it also means... Somebody else must have saved her. <gasps> I'd better ask her what happened. Who's there? Oh, wait a minute. Is that you, Missile? Missile? I'm sorry, I'm not Missile. My name's Sissel. S <laughs> missile v. Sissel. My name is Camilla. Camilla. So it is her. I knew it. What happened to me? What is this place? I can hardly tell the poor little thing this is the land of the dead. The land of the dead? Does that mean I'm dead? Darn, I forgot there are no secrets in the ghost world. You can relax. You're not dead. But this isn't the first time you've been here, apparently. Really? I don't remember. Wait a minute. Maybe I do remember. Sort of. You do? It looks like she doesn't remember being saved very well. Hmm, so there's some other dead person out there with special powers, huh? Anyway, I don't want to press her if she doesn't remember dying. Do you mind if I ask you a few questions about something else? Sure, go ahead, sissy. Sissy, huh? Hmm. Lynn asked for me to do something for her tonight. I know about that part. She asked you to go to the chicken kitchen on Dead End Drive, right? Yeah, but I never got there. Now I wish I could say I'm sorry to her. I never should have gone through that park. What park? Temsic Park. It's a shortcut to Dead End Drive. Is that where the kidnappers grabbed you? Yeah, Lynn always said... I don't like that park. Scary things happen there. Temsic Park, huh? What am I gonna do? Lynn's gonna be mad. She is. How come? Because I left it there. The music box in the park. That's right, the music box. That music box was hidden in the apartment. I finally found it with a little bit of luck and courage. Guess where it was? Uh, I don't know. Where? And pretend I don't know. You know? You don't have to humor me. Oops. So what happened to the music box? I hid it in the bushes at the park just before it happened. Just before... 
Oh, just before you were kidnapped, huh? I didn't want the bad man to take it, so I hid it. I bet it's still there in the park. You did well. So the music box is in the park. I'd better let Lynn know. This is your old house? Yep, this is where we lived until five years ago. But now I live with Lynn and Missile. Lynn is like a big sister to you, isn't she? Yep, she's a detective, you know. She's a hero. She is, huh? By the way, about your father. Uh, is he the justice minister? Uh, my father is gone. Gone? Maybe he passed away? No, that's not it. My dad, he's gonna die, and it's all because of me. Wh what What do you mean, because of me? Why would you say that? It's called an execution. My dad is a detective. N no way! Don't tell me your father is Detective Jowd? That's right. What in the world? Five years ago, something really bad happened. Like a scary dream. But it wasn't a dream. Five years ago? That murder case. It was Mom's birthday that day. My mom and dad were working, and I was home by myself. And then I had an idea. Well, I was gonna surprise my mom. I set up that contraption. I'm home, Camilla. Why is it so dark? Camilla, no! Why'd you put the gun in it? This is the exact same trap that killed Lynn earlier. There's some connection here. Surprise, Mom! Mom! What was that noise? I still can't believe it happened. It wasn't supposed to work like that. Hmm, I know that contraption. And I know how it was supposed to work. Party poppers and a cake? A birthday message. My dad told me not to tell anybody. Just leave it to me, he said. My dad wanted to be executed. He asked them for it. But I wanted to tell everyone it was my fault. My dad said that what I saw was a bad dream. He told me to forget it. This is all so unbelievably tragic. I can't believe it. This little lady is Detective Jowd's daughter? I just can't tell her. I can't tell her why she was kidnapped. Why was I kidnapped? I want to know! Oops. There are no secrets in the ghost world. Maybe we'd better stop talking. It's too dangerous. Sissy, you're not going to talk to me anymore? I think we'd better get you out of here first. We can talk more after that. Okay, but... I'm going to rescue you now. You just hold on a little longer, all right? Uh, okay, but we'll talk later, right? Don't forget, you promised, sissy. All right.
What took you so long? I traveled the entire town in search of the finest bread and milk for you, my dear. But it's late and all the shops are closed. We're leaving this place right now. What? But he's not here yet. If we couldn't meet at the restaurant, where are we supposed to meet here? Yes, and he's the one who chose this location. Hmm. I don't like this one bit. We have to run around doing all this extra work, all for the sake of his deal. Be quiet. <laughs> it can't be helped. This place is too dangerous. I told you, my sixth sense, very strong. All right, as you wish, beauty. I feel it. I sense something here in this room. Is somebody there? Can you hear me? Is she talking to me? I can sense your presence, you know. Next time I sense you, child will die. Remember that. All right, we're leaving. Pardon me, little lady. Cram's little girl back into suitcase. Poor thing. Hmm. All of a sudden, I'm left behind alone. Alone in the room that stole that little lady's smile away five years ago. The little lady is gone now. Why does he always say little lady? Why not just say girl? The little lady is gone now, leaving me with only a few new facts. A very few heavy, very sad facts. Does Lynn know, all, know about all this? One other thing stands out in my mind. I can sense your presence. The sum of that kidnapper's final words. Do those two know? Do the kidnappers know about the powers of the dead? Yes. No. Oh, we're making good progress, those guys. Oh, nice lady! Oh, little lady, please come back to me! Little lady, you should know not to play with blue men, Freund Leiven. All right. <laughs> uh, okay. That was a fun time. We, we unlocked 12.01 a.m., Whatever that means. I, I think that just means we unlocked it in the chapter select. No. Yeah, that was at 12... I don't know, 12, 10 a.m. Whatever. Looks like the next chapter is at the Justice Minister's office. All right. Anyway. Thank you guys for joining in. It's late, so I'm just going to say a quick goodbye to everybody. And have a goodbye. I'm going to go make sure my and Jax, you're okay. Have a, a blessed night, all.